So here this week, when we when we are going through with the scriptures, uh, I wanna I wanna con- uh, propose to you that God's word is to be your ultimate and final authority. That God loves you so much that he literally gave you his word. God didn't put us in some escape room called life and said, hey, if you want to get to know me, figure it out. God's word is a a lens for us to see God more clearly. It's also a mirror. It's a mirror for you and me to see ourselves more clearly. To understand our heart, our motivation, our situation. All right, I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. We're going to read through chapter 2 and chapter 3. And tonight we are going to talk about sin. Sin is the fundamental distrust, unbelief, and rejection of God and the human displacement of God at the center of reality. There's a lot of big words in there, okay? We displace God as the central authority of our lives. Where he should be, where he belongs at the center of our lives, the authority of our lives, we say, you don't belong there anymore. I'm going to occupy that space now. And you know what? You and I were never created to occupy that space. We were never created to be the authority over our own lives. But let's look, let's come back to Adam and Eve because they got on a cycle of sin. Beginning in 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work and to keep it. And the Lord and the Lord commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of any tree of the garden. In fact, you may eat of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat. Right here in the garden, before sin has ever entered the world, God has given Adam everything that he needed to know in order to trust him. He doesn't hold back anything from Adam. God causes him to take a nap, and when he wakes up, there's Eve. Eve, the one who is to be his ally in war. The serpent comes to her, and the serpent says, you know what God knows? Is if you ate of that tree, you'd be just like him because you are God yourself. But how many of us buy into that exact same lie every day of our lives? That we are God. And yet the Bible pulls back the curtain for us and it shows us what our lives already testify to. That when we engage in that rebellion, that displacement of God, it causes shame and hiding. And that shame and that hiding, it only fosters pain. Sin ushered in hopelessness where there was supposed to be hope and joy. Sin ushered in conflict where there was supposed to be peace. But the beautiful story of the scriptures, the beautiful reality of God from page three on is that he said we don't have to stay in that place of displacement. Here's what Romans chapter six, verse 18 tells us. That if you are in Christ, Jesus has set you free from the power of sin. And so now you are not slaves to sin any longer. Instead, you are slaves to righteousness. You don't have to have the perspective of sin anymore because you are in Christ. And so instead of getting caught on this cycle, we're invited into the life of Jesus. Into the forgiveness of Jesus and the redemption of Jesus. Here's what John tells us in 1 John 1, 9. He says, if we are faithful to confess our sins, our Father in heaven is faithful to forgive us. We confess and we repent and we're reminded of our position in God's family, but we still have to walk through the muck of life, the junk of life, the pain of life. And yet we are reminded then as we seek relief in the cross that we don't have to stay there, that this cycle doesn't have to continue, that Jesus gives us relief. That Jesus gives us healing and he gives us hope. What do we deserve? Death. Separation. Because we displaced God. What does God offer us? Life. Abundant life. New life in Christ. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Sin doesn't have to dominate you. Because he sent his son for you. And that all who believe in Jesus experience abundant life. He is the only one 
that can lead you into that life. He is the only one that can set you free from the lies that plague our hearts and our minds.